So my first thing is the most important thing to do after a breakup is give yourself time and space to process the breakup. Any relationship, long or short term, because it's all about the way we feel about it. So it doesn't have to be a 30 year like marriage to be devastating when it ends. So what I call this is like mourning the dream. And there's a process that I'm going to tell you how to do it right now. So mourning the dream, what does that mean? It basically means we need to mourn the dream of what we hoped the relationship would become. The dream that we had for what would happen in the relationship. Because so much of the time, we're not necessarily mourning exactly what happened or the relationship we experienced. It's so much about, we have these high hopes. We want so desperately to have this long lasting, you know, vibrant, durable, exciting love. A lot of times that's not what we're mourning, right? Because that isn't what we had. There's things that you can do to ensure that you don't have the same exact experience that you just had, which is learn. So in every crap stew, I like to say, there's some kind of gem of wisdom for you, but you gotta be willing to like roll up your sleeves and dig in and get your hands dirty to find that gem. And again, it's not about, I wanna figure out what I did wrong. No, I wanna understand what happened in that relationship. Why? What was my 50% of that relationship? Which also means now we can't be all victim-y about it. We can't be like, well, my partner cheated on me, so it's all him or her and zero me. No, it's always 50% you and 50% the other person. You're going to write down what you will really miss about the person or the relationship. What was unique about it? What was amazing about it? Right, because there's a tendency also to want to be super black and white. Like, it's over now and he's a jerk. She's a jerk, that's it, they're just assholes. Mm. Well, but they're not actually. And you wouldn't have been with them or spent time with them. So mourning means you actually write down, hey, I'm gonna miss this, this, and this. These things were great. Those were fun times. What do you, the second list is, what are you super psyched, your PS never doing again? But what is the baggage that you get to get away from because this relationship has ended? And clearly you hit some tipping point in this relationship or somebody did that made you pivot towards end. Mm -hmm. So there's certainly like, why, why, why this is what we do, the list of what we'll miss, the list of what we will not miss is because there is this tendency in our mind to want to just be very one dimensional, two dimensional, like just they're bad. That's what happened. Mm -hmm. And that's not what, or I'm bad. Maybe you cheated and then you're like, it's all, I ruined it all, the one that got away. No, no. You're going to continue doing this exact thing if you don't give yourself the space to understand why it went down the way that it did. How From, your, what are you doing after this? If you didn't say what you wanted to say, I'm going to ask you to write a letter. You don't have to send it. You can send it. But you're going to write a letter that where you get to be fully self-expressed. Most people, maybe you won't send it. That's cool. But it would be great if a, um, a compassionate other could witness it. Mm. What does that mean? That means that you have a friend. You, you read the letter. You tell the experience to. They're not giving you any input. They're not saying what a jerk they are or you are or anyone is. They're simply witnessing you with compassion. And then you can burn the letter ritualistically and consciously with intention to release that experience with all your gems intact, right? So you've taken your wisdom gems from that experience and then release it. That prepares you to be in another relationship.